David Bowie, 75th birthday on Saturday this past weekend, it would have been. We were telling you last week how his estate cashed in big, selling his entire music catalog for $250 million. Well, that was just the latest in a long list of recording artists whose lifetime bodies of work are being sold for huge sums of money. It's a new trend in the music industry, and Jackson Weaver has been looking into all of this. He's in Toronto with us this morning. Happy New Year, Jackson. Interested to talk to you about all of this because I've been reporting on it. I'm trying to think Springsteen, Bowie the other day, the long, long list. What's going on? I mean, as, as you mentioned, there are so many artists. And of course, as we both noted, David Bowie's estate sold his music catalog for $250 million just last week, a, a gigantic sale, something that we've seen echoed uh, for that as well. David Bowie, as, as you see here, is, is a huge artist, of course. But then, I mean, last month we had Bruce Springsteen. He sold his catalog for a record $500 million, which is likely the biggest sale of a catalog ever in the history of the music industry. And outside of that, then there's other huge artists. Artists, there's Dix, David Crosby, Tina Turner, uh, and, and younger or earlier career artists as well. You know, you have Shakira, Calvin Harris, and then actually just a few days after the sale of David Bowie's catalog, John Legend sold his catalog as well. So it's something that we're seeing ramp up, and there are a few reasons for that. The first of which is actually uh, to do with a unique U U.S. tax loophole. And uh, when United States President Joe Biden was elected, he did say he was going to change uh, how taxes work in the country, capital gains taxes. And without getting too into the nuts and bolts of it, what it effectively means is that within a year, two years possibly, there, there could be uh, double the amount of tax on these sales. They're paying roughly 20%, these artists right now. That could go up to 37% in, in a year or two. And you know when we're talking about sales that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, that is a lot of money to to potentially pay to not get to yourself. So, you know, that's prompting these artists to sell as quickly as possible. Outside of that, there are issues to do with the pandemic. Um, and the music industry has kind of been held together with with uh, sticks and bubble gum for quite a while. For decades and decades, the way that artists made their money was through record sales, of course. But the rise of piracy sites and pl streaming platforms has really upended how musicians can make money. They shifted to unending, grueling tours boring schedules sometimes, but then the pandemic took away live music and that's affecting artists at all levels. I mean, I mentioned David Crosby earlier, but he was on the Howard Stern show last year to explain why he had to sell his music and take a listen to what he said. No money from streaming, so no money from records. So then I was trying to be grateful that I could still go out and work and, you know, pay the rent and take care of my family. And along comes COVID and I can't go out and work. So what I did was I sold my publishing. Emotionally, it sucks. It's not not good at all. Uh, but it solved my problem, and uh, it made me able to take care of my family. So, uh, of course, that is, you know, the very nature of the issue. And outside of that as well, there are issues to do with, with certain genres. I spoke with Tim Jones, who is an artistic manager and label owner. He explained how certain genres, rock and folk, can have a more difficult time pivoting to online spaces that have cropped up during the pandemic. You know, you have Travis Scott, who's a rapper, who was able to do that Fortnite concert. Millions of people went online, virtual reality. But if your audience has decided how they're going to engage with music over decades and decades, they might find it more difficult to pivot somewhere else to engage with your music in a new way. So it really is affecting artists, musicians all over the world, and especially maybe even right here in Canada. Well, uh, tell me about that, because if part of the reason is this tax loophole in the United States, what's the situation for Canadian artists? Yes, I, I mean, th that loophole does affect artists who are selling uh, in the United States, across the world even sometimes. But there is an, another issue actually in Canada that makes it even sometimes maybe even more insistent, maybe even more current of an issue, pressing of an issue. I spoke with uh, Michael McCarty, who is a uh, Canadian music industry veteran, and he actually founded a company, Kilometer Music Group, early in 2021, specifically to buy up the rights to Canadian music. He explained that Canada actually 
performs so well in the music industry. He said that we outperform England uh, during the British invasion. And uh, he is buying up rights, including to uh, The Weeknd. He has partial rights, his company has partial rights to Blinding Lights and Save Your Tears, some of the biggest songs of 2021, the second and third biggest songs of 2021. And he's also has partial ownership in Dua Lipa's Levitating, which is the number one song of 2021. And it's because most of these rights are owned by foreign companies. And he says that Canada is missing out on huge amounts of revenue for that reason. And he hopes to change how, how rights ownership and information ownership works in Canada, which he says is the future of really all industries. Jackson, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Literally, I was having a discussion at home wondering what was going on that was leading to all of these uh, catalogs being sold. So I understand it so much better and I appreciate it. And anybody wanting to read more, Jackson has a piece up online coming up later today, cbcnews.ca. Thank you, Jackson Weaver. Thanks so much.